Good morning students. I hope you all are doing well and staying home. You all must be facing difficulties these days. But one of the best ways to relieve stress and discover what matters to you most is to get creative. So students, always try to be more creative in whatever you are learning or whatever you are doing. Today, we are going to continue the chapter The Rise of Nationalism in Europe. In the last class, we saw the changes that happened during French Revolution. How did French Revolution lead to the idea of a nation? And today, we are going to start with the next part of the chapter that talks about making of nationalism in Europe. If we talk about how was nationalism in the mid 18th century, then we get to know that there were no nation states as we call them today. But in fact, Europe was divided into kingdoms, empires and cantons. Now by canton, you mean a subdivision of a country established for any political or, or administrative purpose. The people in Europe were diverse. They did not see themselves sharing a collective identity or a common culture. For example, in Austria and Hungary, there were so many different kinds of people, different regions and different religions. The only common thing amongst them was the Habsburg Empire that ruled them. Such differences did not unite them. Then, what was the change that came in Europe and brought the idea of a nation state? Now, we are going to talk about the change we were discussing in the last slide. In Europe, there was a feudal system under which we broadly had two subdivisions, the aristocracy and the peasantry. Aristocracy people were dominant class people. They owned states in the countryside. They were high society people. But in population, they were a small group. Talking about the peasantry, they had a large population. That means they were large in number. But they farmed land as tenants or maybe as small owners. They were uneducated people. Now what happened with the industrialization happening in England? With the industrialization in England, a new social group came into being. This new social group was the middle class. These middle class constituted businessmen, professionals, teachers, industrialists, etc. That means these people were educated and they brought the idea of national unity. Now what do we mean by national unity? According to them, national unity meant close to liberalism and liberalism in short meant freedom. Liberalism is derived from the Latin word liber meaning free. That means liberalism in short means freedom. But freedom from what? Freedom from the autocracy. It meant a concept by government, a concept of government by consent. That means a representative government where people themselves ruled themselves, right? So in the 19th century Europe, there was a rising demand of these middle classes because of the same reason. Let us discuss them more in detail. These middle classes were educated enough and realized the importance of national unity as said before. They argued for a creation of unified economic territory. Now by unified economic territory, we mean a place or an area within which goods, people and capital could move freely. Let us understand this with the help of an example. During Napoleon rule, each region had its own currency, weights and measures. A person traveling from let's say Hamburg to Nuremberg had to pass through 11 custom barriers and he paid a custom barrier or a custom duty of 5% each at every custom barrier. Now 
which of these regions had their own currencies as already told now measuring anything in different weights and measures brought away so many difficulties let's assume in india if in every state we had a different currency then moving from up to let's say delhi we had to change currencies this could have been very difficult for us right so the new emerging class was in demand because these middle classes wanted the obstacles to be removed they felt these currencies and differences in measures and weights as obstacles to economic growth they argued for a free movement of goods people and capital in europe they also led to making of a new customs union in 1834 which led to the abolition of all the tariff barriers and reduced the currencies from 30 to 2 this sense of economic nationalism strengthened the wider nationalist sentiments growing in the hearts of the people at that time now we'll talk about treaty of vienna treaty of vienna is a very important concept as it is many a times asked in boards exam till now we talked about what was the structure of europe how did the new middle class emerge and also what did the new middle class meant by national unity now we are going to talk about a new kind of conservatism the european powers the four european powers britain russia austria and prussia they defeated napoleon in 1815 they then met at a place called vienna and they drew a pact a pact called treaty of vienna the treaty of vienna had an objective to undo most of the changes that came in europe during the napoleon rule they wanted conservatism to come in now what did they mean by conservatism the four european powers wanted conservatism but what do we mean by conservatism conservatism is basically a political philosophy that says that the old traditions old customs and old values should be brought back they stressed the importance of the older traditions and they resisted change so the four european powers were talking about britain russia prussia and austria they also did not want any new change to come up they restored monarchy and brought back the bourbon dynasty all the major changes that took place because of the treaty of vienna are listed as follows the conservative regime as we already told had to come back because of the autocratic government that came in there were censorship imposed nobody could speak against the king there was no freedom of press there was no freedom of speech and because of these changes there was rage and anger among the people now because of this rage and anger among the people there were formations of new secret societies these secret societies led to the spread of nationalism these secret societies wanted to train revolutionaries and to develop and spread the spirit of nationalism among all now here is a task for you all there is there is a person shown in the picture and it is also given in your book you can see his name in the slide shown in front of you he was called the most dangerous enemy of the autocratic social order now why was he called the most dangerous enemy you have to find out okay this is one of the homeworks for you all the rest homework will be uploaded on the portal this is all for the day and in the next class we'll be discussing about all the revolutions that have taken place during the period of 1830 to 1848 that is all for the day everyone have a nice day